Welcome back to KK's Quilt Studio. Hey everybody, it's Marilyn. Heard somebody say the other day, I can't draw to save my life. I can't even draw a stick figure. Well, I'm going to prove you wrong. We're going to work today with some of the drawing tools in Art and Stitch. We're going to talk about nodes and changes that you can make and things that you can do to turn yourself into that artistically challenge to an actual artist. So let's open up our Art and Stitch and get started. These are the four, five tools that we're going to be using today. These are the drawing tools found on the left vertical bar of your Art and Stitch, whether you have Art and Stitch Base or Art and Stitch Plus. We're going to do just some simple, basic drawing with tools, and then I'm going to talk about nodes. We're going to start with the line tool and I'm just going I'm using a mouse today so I have left clicked and set my first node I'm going to left click again so I'm just clicking and releasing moving my mouse clicking and releasing and drawing lines okay when you're done either right click or use your select tool to click off of it and you're all all set we so we've drawn a line so if I use my select tool of course I'm not going to have any nodes but if I use my reshape tool now I see my nodes here is the starting point nodes nodes and the stopping point you'll notice that when I click on the nodes I don't have any handlebars it's because there's nothing I can do with these to reshape the lines because they are lines, nothing other than left click, hold, and drag, and repositioning points. That's all you can do with a line node. Okay, let's go to the curve and let's draw. And again, I'm clicking in various areas and releasing, moving to the next area and setting another node. Okay, so now when I click off of that, go to my reshape tool. Oh, now my nodes, I have handlebars. So I can move those handlebars by elongating them, shortening, shortening them up, going closer to that node, and changing the line. You'll notice that these work in conjunction with each other. When I lift up on this side, that side, the handlebar goes down. So they work together and elongate or bring in. Okay, that's the curve tool. Now let's use the Bezier. It works a little bit different. Again, we can click by left clicking and setting the nodes, or I can hold down on my mouse key and you'll notice I'm getting those long handlebars again. Click again to set, and then I'm getting a reshape or an active reshape just by holding down on that left mouse key. Again, I can release it and move around until I get to a point where I want to set my next node. And again, I can pull those handlebars and reshape lines okay so that is the bezier curve after we're done with this i want you to go back and play with these and see what kind of shapes and items you're getting now you'll notice these were lines because i just moved or clicked and moved to a new point so they don't have handlebars this one has a handlebar and you'll see I stretched that way out of shape and this one has a handlebar so depending on how you click or click drag hold drag and move you're going to get different um, different structures or appearances to your line so it makes a difference as far as what tool you're using this one we're going to click on the three-point arc tool there's no 
If I click and hold down on my mouse, holding down my left key, I'm not getting the same reaction I got with my Bezier curve. So this is one, two, three clicks, and on the third, it gives me that curve shape. So again, now once you've done one, two, three clicks, now you start again at two, using this last point now is renumbered as your one click. So it's kind of like a dance, a waltz. One, two, three, two, three, two, and three. You, on that third click, you get the curve or the reshape. And when I go back to the reshape tool, these nodes click on the line and now we're going to look at the nodes. The nodes take on different properties. Let's come down a little bit. And here we just have one handlebar. There's nothing on the opposite side to change. So when you click on that endpoint, you only have one little handlebar. When you click on this one, this is a smooth node. And again, we have those two handlebars that work together. When we click on this node, now you'll see that we actually have two handlebars that work independently of, of each other. And these, this node is actually a cusp. You can change nodes properties after you've drawn them simply by selecting my left click on that node, the little blue box, and right click on your mouse. And indeed, you'll see that the cusp node is checked. I can change it to a smooth node by clicking on the smooth. So you can change properties of nodes after you have um, created them. And now you see that smooth node handlebars are working together. Now they'll work independently when you draw them in and go back out, but otherwise they swing together. They swing opposite. And again, this is a cusp. So that one, two, three, you're going to, on that third node, you get a cusp. On the number two node, again, you're going to get a smooth point where those handlebars work together or opposites. So know that you can change nodes. If I want this one to have more of a um, angular corner property, I'll change it from smooth to cusp. So when you're drawing, you don't, even though you've used maybe the three point tool, you can always go back and change that angle of the node simply by changing the properties of the node and get the angle that you want. Now let's go to the pencil. And even though it says it's a pencil, I'm not drawing with the pencil. I'm still drawing with my mouse, with movement of my mouse and clicks. So if I click and hold down on the mouse, I can draw. Or if I had a background image, I can trace. Once I let go, my drawing stops. If I move away, I'll start drawing again. You'll notice that my previous line does not stop. And now when I release this, the mouse this time, watch what happens from the first curly, curly line that I drew to the one that I just drew, they connect. So if you 
start over here, that line will connect up. And you're getting various shapes, you're getting curves, you're getting everywhere you change direction, you're getting a node. Let's go back to our reshape tool and stop the drawing, the drawing function. I can go in here and I can delete nodes simply by selecting the node and then hitting delete on my keyboard. I can delete this node and cause a reshape. If I, I have a straight line here, if I want to add a node, double left click. You'll see that that adds a smooth node. So add points, delete points. Um, it's always good to draw something with the least amount of nodes that you can. These are pretty close together and really aren't necessary. Um, so I could delete one or two of these and then use the handlebars on either one to help reshape that line. So those are some tips and clues on how to use the drawing tools. Open up your Art and Stitch and just play with the drawing tools. If you want to bring in a backdrop, click on the backdrop and practice tracing around um, a shape or an image that you bring in from um, another place on your computer by using the backdrop tool or even some of the backdrop pictures that are installed in Art and Stitch. So I hope that you've enjoyed today's video and if you'd like to learn more about Art and Stitch, check out my website. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and check that little bell, click on that little bell so you'll be notified every time that I put up a new YouTube. Uh, I've got lots of social media accounts or just drop me a note by email. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for joining me and until we meet next time, I wish you happy quilting.